Hello everybody, this is Amber Bell from Training Dynamo. Today I'm going to train you on how to create a Microsoft Dynamics GP SmartList export solution. This is not a brand new feature, but every time I show this at GP events, there's at least one person who says they've never heard of it. So I thought I would share with you today how to get to the feature, set it up, and how to use it. Even if you're using an older version of GP, you will have access to using this really cool tool. So the first thing you'll need to do is open up SmartList. I have a toolbar shortcut, or I can also hit Microsoft Dynamics GP and go to SmartList. This will work with any SmartList report, the ones that come from GP out of the box, or ones that are created with SmartList Designer or Builder. We're going to hit Purchasing for today's example and Payables. I have a list of AP invoices from the current year of my test company, which is 2027. I want to take this list and put it out in Excel, because this is what you're probably used to doing. Out in Excel, it's going to look very plain, and the numbers have a lot of extra zeros at the end. I could go through and every time I export format it, but instead I'm going to set up an export solution. So the first thing I did was hit File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and I make sure that the Developer Ribbon is checked. That's right here. Then I'm going to go under Developer, and hit record macro on the macro um, part of the menu. My first one I always call format. You can call it anything you want or even leave, leave it named macro one. Save it to this workbook and click OK. Now any clicks that I do, it's going to save and remember those as part of the macro. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing my formatting. First thing I wanna do is format this column. I'll just use the accounting dollar version. Then what I want to do is do some sorts. So I'm going to click the sort option and do a custom sort. And I want to sort by ID and then maybe sort by date. I could maybe sort by amount if I want to see their highest amount invoice. There's options and things like that. Okay, so so far so good. Now I'm going to click on data, outline, and do a subtotal. And I'm going to subtotal at each change in ID sum and amount and it automatically knew that's that's a, because of the way the columns were it figured out that's probably what I wanted. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and resize my columns and also do a header that looks a little better. So we're going to go back to home. I'll pick my favorite color. I'll make this bold and I'm going to click right between the one and the A. Click right between one of the columns and resize. Go ahead and click OK. Now what I'm going to do is go into my page layout and I'm going to go into my print titles. Now this is very narrow. If I wanted to, I could resize it, reorient it to um, landscape and change the margins, but I don't need to because it's a very narrow report. I want to print the grid lines every time. I want to repeat the top row on every page. I'm going to go into my header and footer and make a custom footer. I like to do, maybe I'll do over here the date and the time. I did a space in between those. And then over here, I'm gonna try page and a space, the page symbol and a space of and a space and then pages, which is right next to it and click okay. Now it's going to have the date and time and number of pages. I'm going to click okay. So right now it looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and save and stop this macro by doing stop recording. Now at this point, I'm going to do a second macro. I'm going to click right between the A and the one. I'm going to, oh, go ahead and click, I'll click anywhere first. We're gonna record a second macro. And this one's going to be called clear. I wanted to make sure that that um, selection was part of my macro. And we're gonna click okay. And I'm going to click right here. And I'm gonna right click and say delete. Then I'll hit stop recording. Now, technically, I could have just deleted everything and I'd have been fine. I don't need to do that macro. But in case someone wacky gets into my file, I always include a clear macro. Now I want to save this. And I'm going to say save as. 
Right now I have a folder on my desktop that I call macros. I could call, I, I normally would have it, I'd recommend you have it on your server in a, a shared location so that everyone can get to it. But we're just gonna use this folder that I have here. Actually, I'm gonna make a new folder called export solutions. If the folder name is really long and it's 85 layers deep on your server, it, it the, the field name can be about 85 characters altogether. And that's a common issue that it's too long and, this, and GP can't read it. So that's one troubleshooting thing you can do. Notice I'm in the right folder. I'm gonna switch my type to macro enable template. I'm gonna show that up on the screen for a little bit so you can see that. Macro Excel macro enabled template. When I do that though, it just automatically jumped back to the C drive and my custom office templates. So I actually have to go back manually to the desktop or my server, go back to the folder, and now I can just change the name of the file. And I'm going to call this AP invoice report. And I'm gonna put 2021 so I can find it when I look for it in a minute. I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna close this in GP, I'm going to click Smart List. On the old version, the top toolbar might not have the icons, but it'll still say Smart List, and it will still say Export Solutions. Now I'm going to call this AP Invoices. And I'm gonna look for that document we just created. I'm gonna go back to my desktop and my Export Solutions and pull that report. My preparation macro, you flip. So my first one will be clear. My second one will be format. Even though we recorded them format, then clear, you flip those. Switch the application to Excel. I messed that up a couple times and that's something you'll wanna make sure you do correctly. Go down to the type of smart list, which is going to be payables transactions. And we're going to come in here and say AP invoices current year. I could pick more than one as long as it has the same columns, like the third, you know, the last column has the dollars and it's this many columns, it'll work. For now, I'm just doing it with one and we're gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna close. I'm gonna click anywhere. I'm gonna come back. And you'll see my Excel has a little arrow now here instead of just plain Excel and I have that AP invoice report 2021. I'm going to hit that. We're gonna check it out in Excel. And we've got, here we go. And you can see here now we've got our new report exported. And if we look in the print preview, as you can see, the report is nicely formatted with the date and time at the bottom, the number of pages and the grid lines. It's very easy to do and it looks a lot better than the normal export. For more Microsoft Dynamics GP tips, visit my website, trainingdynamo.com. There you can buy my books and make sure you use code YouTube to save 30%. Also like and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more tips and tricks all the time to make using Microsoft Dynamics GP easier. Thank you so much and have a great day.